Okay. So welcome to the Websites 1.0 class. Um, I sort of want to do three things this morning. Uh, the first, I want to do a little show and tell of uh, a website I did when I was teaching uh, English 12 and maybe give you guys some ideas. And then uh, we'll start our tutorial just to get you started on your own website if you'd like to. You can use your laptop or you could just listen, watch the video later, you know, depending on uh, how you learn best. And then I'll stop talking at some point and then give you guys just a chance to work with your websites. So uh, I believe it was 2011, 2012. Uh, I had a vision for my classroom. I wanted to make a website that this was just my idea and the idea was I wanted to make a website that was so good that a student would never have to walk into my classroom and yet pass my class do all the assignments do all the projects connecting with me connecting with students uh, and they never maybe I never saw them except the last day of school now I didn't expect uh, you know students not to show up of course but that was my vision as far as making a website and then the other part of it was I wanted the website to be sort of a tool that I as a teacher used so if I want to know what I'm gonna teach I put it on my website it's like my brain is on the website you know so if it's useful for me as a teacher then the students are gonna benefit so uh, what I have here is a portal um, so this is a website, a Google site, just by itself. Uh, and this is good if you're teaching different types of classes. So I would have a website. Not this is the entire site. It's pretty much just one page right there. Uh, but that way, students can you know select which course they want to enter. Um, this website is still available, even though I don't teach these classes anymore. Uh, they are. Uh, archived so if you go to patriothighschool.com go to teachers and there's the link uh, to my site you could just take a look around see if there's anything that can give you guys some ideas okay so I would like to do a little show and tell this is the English 12 site I'll pull up the live one right now so I'm just gonna do a quick walkthrough um, I won't get too detailed as to as as far as how I did these things that would be more like my session uh, my session two I'm going to teach later on Google Apps this is just a quick run through quick tour uh, so as you see all the assignments all the units are listed on the website I think uh, I've seen from a lot of teacher course websites that I've seen they tend to be more like um, a business card you know this is my class and this is how to contact me they might put a syllabus maybe maybe there's a calendar you know that's kind of the extent of it so this is going you know way past that where it's it's a virtual classroom so if I was a student and I never even came to class or maybe I'm sick maybe home hospital and I have had those situations like we all have had they can go here and let they know what unit we're on so let's say I click on Canterbury Tales and let's actually look look at this as a student okay so I know a little little small uh, to read uh, so let's see all right what's the first thing I have to do as a student okay well there's gonna be a test on September 18th okay got it um, I need to read the prologue I need to read the nun's priest tale I need to read the partner's tale oh well I can't make it to school on the 18th well luckily there's an online exam okay so uh, I used Quizstar for this particular um, testing process so okay so I take the test great I took the test oh now there's a presentation September 15th through 16th well how am I gonna do a presentation if I'm not there well let's see how this goes okay first I have to sign up for my presentation it says don't sign up for the wrong period the period number is on the bottom tab okay so let's view the roster okay so this is a Google Doc that was made available to the students and I could see basically who's reading what and which students have already signed up um, for that particular chapter so if I don't come to school I could see the the blanks right here oh there's an open spot the partner 
Okay, I guess I'm going to read that. And my partner is Jasmine and Rosa Rodriguez. Those are my partners. Okay, so I did all that as a student from home. Okay. All right, so I signed up for my presentation. I know the group I'm working with. I know what I'm supposed to be reading. Okay, now i got to read it. Well, I forgot the textbook. I didn't get the textbook. Okay, well, there you go. There's the online textbook right there. Okay, well, that takes that excuse away. Okay, now I'm going to work with a group. Um, part of the class was teaching a little bit of group dynamics, how to work with a group. These are all those 21st century skills we're embedding into our courses. So, as a group, um, I then have to get to fill out this peer evaluation form. I can evaluate my peers. And I'm not going to discuss how that impacts grades or anything like that. It's just a tool. So I can say, hey, you know, uh, Rosa did pretty good. I thought she participated pretty well. I don't think she really did the readings, and I, but she did contribute some useful ideas. So you kind of get the, uh, the notion there. Okay, so then I have the rubric for my presentation posted right here. Um, and then, of course, I can turn in my presentation online using different Web 2.0 tools. And that's a whole different class we could talk about. But there's a lot of projects they can do online, uh, presentations, animations. There's, there's hundreds of ways they could show that they did the readings in a creative way. And, but I also have the test, too. So I have multiple ways to check the, their understanding and hold them accountable for the assignments. Okay, now just to help them out more, I'm gonna provide any kind of resources that will help them. I'm gonna facilitate their learning. So I have the audio books right there, so maybe they're not good readers or maybe they don't have a chance. Hey, they could listen to it. I tell them, just go, go clean your room, go clean the kitchen and listen to the partner's tale. Do something, go for a walk so you don't fall asleep, just listen. Okay, some do better that way. If I found YouTube videos of student projects, I put them there so they can get be inspired, see what other kids are doing around the country. Okay, so that's sort of the uh, walkthrough of a typical unit on a website. So you see how this is beyond just posting on the calendar, hey, you have a test on the 18th, hey, there's a presentation, okay? There's a lot more. They can, they can actually do these things from home. Now, I'll just point out a couple other features of the site. Um, as you saw the assignments, I also maintained a daily blog. Uh, so all the things that we did each day would be posted. Um, so I kept sort of a daily journal. There were, it looks like the district blocked half of this stuff. Looks good at, it looks good at my house though. But uh, I would have a picture, let's see if this comes through. No, probably won't. I took pictures of the whiteboard. If we had a big discussion in class, I took a photo and I put that into the journal. Um, <laughs> here we go. All right, so it looks real sloppy and looks real crazy, but I'm sure if you were in class that day, this would make perfect sense to you. doesn't make any sense to me now, but okay. But you get the idea. So the 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 products that we created as a class, I'm recording and putting them in the blog. That also helps me if I teach the class the next year. It's like, how did I do that unit? I, I completely forgot. I can go back and say, oh yeah, that's right. I remember that. Okay, so that's, a, that's one other tool right there. Of course, I do have a typical calendar. I use a Google calendar, so students a lot of students have Google accounts and they could just integrate that into their own calendars, their personal calendars. Um, any kind of extra credit, kids are always asking for extra credit. So if I find, you know, plays or, you know, go to the Renaissance Fair and this is the product that I want you to produce from that, you know, so any kind of extra credit I post. Uh, grades. Now, there's an interesting note. Uh, I've been doing these course websites for a few years and I use very detailed Google Analytics which is a tool that I can see who's doing what uh, maybe not by name but I can see the numbers how many people are actually looking at the blog how many people are checking the homework how important is extra credit does anybody really even care are they even looking at this thing so 
by monitoring it for a couple of years, I'll tell you this. I'll save you two years of, of work. Okay, uh, flash and glitz and making things all fancy does not drive traffic. Maybe it does if you're selling shoes or something, but this is your course website. You know, and some students aren't always that excited about going to your course website. But so, but I still got to drive traffic to my site. You know, I need to market it. I need to talk about it. It needs to be part of the class um, to get them over there. Uh, just because you build it doesn't mean they're necessarily going to go there. Um, but the, so one of the things I did to drive traffic is grades. That's something that they care about. They want to know their grade. Whether or not they want to know the homework, I don't know. But they want to know their grade. So by putting grades there, it drives traffic to my site. So when they get to check out their grades, oh, they might see some of the extra credit. They might stumble upon some of the other assignments. So just driving that traffic and building an online community is part of having an effective website. So uh, you might have your own way to do it. I know they, st I know they, st they have the, the parent portal or kids can log into Zangle and check that stuff out. But per, like I said, providing an easy to use tool though, I want to drive traffic to my site. Even if it's a link that takes them to, Zang to, to the Zangle gradebook, I'm going to put it on my site to drive traffic. Okay. So um, back in the days, I just did a PDF with everybody's, uh, you, you could do it where it's only student ID, so there's no names. Um, and they could just look at that that way. And there was no particular order as far as uh, the, the grades, so it was quite random. They just so that you had to, they had to know their student uh, ID number to figure that out. Okay. Um, of course, I had the course syllabus. And any tutorials I had as far as the technical part of, of some of the projects, even just me explaining what the project is I would upload those videos and I had a chance so I have a channel here on YouTube um, I'm glad it's not blocked we could see it pretty clearly but here's a part that's just gonna blow you away I as I said when I started out I wanted a class that students didn't have to go to to attend that was my vision well little did I know had no clue but at the end of the year they cut British Lit out. So the class I taught was, is gone. We're not teaching it here anymore. Okay, and more than that, I'm not teaching it anymore. Okay, so here's a class that two years ago, you know, I did all of this work and it's gone. But look at this. If I go to about, look at this number over here. I know it's hard to read. I have 131 subscribers. These are not my students from that year. 38,635 views. I guarantee you those were not my students. Okay, I probably had maybe a couple hundred at the most at the end of the year. 38,000 views. I have students writing me from all over the world. Uh, basically every few days. I get an email. Uh, they commented on a video. Thanks for helping me with my essay. Thanks for helping me through uh, Frankenstein. I had no idea what was going on. My teacher didn't explain anything to me. So it's this, it's this gift that keeps on giving, you know. So you put your whole, your, you put your, your heart and your soul into it, and you make it this virtual place. Now you're teaching a lot more than the people that are in the room. Now, so it happens and the, so I just want to kind of in, inspire you guys if you make a great effective website your impact is gonna be way beyond what you can imagine and you know I have not added any British lit videos for two years I feel bad for all my subscribers they are probably waiting for more stuff so I, I might just to make them happy maybe I'll do you know, a little walk through through a book or something. I'm not sure, but the impact is incredible. So, um, as far as my experience, and we'll get to the tutorials in just a moment. Um, I not only manage the Patriot High School website, I also manage a church website. This one looks like it's not loading right, but 
uh, a church of about a congregation of about four to five hundred people okay so there's the church one I, ru I also created and run a website for a legal and court reporting services uh, there's the Girl Scout one okay but here's the most exciting part I run all these websites and I don't know any coding I did never went to school for programming I don't know any HTML5 or whatever those other languages are maybe if I did I don't know that's a whole different job maybe but that's what's awesome is all of you guys with the tools we have today can create incredible websites that have incredible impact without knowing any programming no coding at all so that's exciting right uh, so before I get to the tutorial, I, I need to mention one website, and that is Wix.com, W-I-X. If you actually want to make a great looking site, I would go through Wix.com. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a bit more tedious. You got to upload the, your, your images and that sort of thing. But I just had to mention them. It's free. Wix is free. And what was the question? Yes, W-I-X. Um, yeah, instead of Google, you could go with Wix. If you do the free one, you'll have little advertisements on your homepage, you know, on Wix. Yeah, well, Google has a lot more we can do as an organization, and we have some kind of control. I mean, if you forget your password with Google, I could reset it. Okay, so, but, you know, if you go to Wix, and no one on this site can control what happens with your site except for them, if that makes any sense. Okay, so I just want to make sure I mention them. So if your concern is, I want the most beautiful site, okay, go to Wix.com. Google doesn't make the most beautiful sites. But what Google does do is allow you to plug in a lot of collaboration type of tools. Um, but Wix is very compatible with Google. So I've been very successful. All those professional sites that I showed you were all designed with Wix. I would do the Patriot High School website with Wix, but it does cost money if you want to start uh, talking about domain names and that kind of stuff, you know. So, but the free one, you know, Wix.com. Uh, let's go into the tutorial now. And what I'm going to do is just walk through the creation of a teacher or course website. You could just watch. You can follow along. Like I said, I am recording this, so you could just go back and watch the steps. Also, you know, the, there are many tutorials on using Google products. You know, if you just type in Google Site Tutorial, you'll find other teachers, probably better than me, that can teach you how to do all the little nuts and bolts. So this is just a quick run through and you can see in the time we have left it's fairly easy to create a brand new site okay and you know what you're gonna find is when you go into creating your website it forces you as a teacher to really think about your class and the scope and the sequence and what you're going to teach because when you go to start building your site and if it's going to be more than just a business a business card students are actually going to use your site you really have to put thought into it, it forces you to to plan ahead and to have a uh, because when you start to design your menus there's a structure there you know so that's I, I that's why I like doing it at the beginning of the year I need to think about what units are going to be t being taught. If, if you, all you need to do is go to google.com. It's real simple. And you're going to sign in. Um, so I sent people uh, account information. Uh, if you can't sign in today, that's no big deal. You can talk to me later. If you want an account later, that's fine. Uh, we have a site license for Google Apps. Anybody can run off and get your own free Gmail account. Yes. But the problem with that is no one can help you except Google if you have a problem. And what's really cool is if you go through us, you get that at PatriotHighSchool.com in your email. Now, this has nothing to do with your district email. This, this doesn't supersede it. It doesn't replace it. Okay, You can use it. You, you can use it more than the district one if you want to. 
It's just a tool, okay? You'll always have your district email. Okay, so, yes. Right. Run on their server. I would say anything you do on district computers is subject to them looking at what you're doing, I suppose. Right. So, yeah. right. right. Okay. But, uh, hey, you can go on your personal computer at home and do a whole lot of things with Gmail, right? Okay. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and log in. Mr. Wood here. So, once I'm logged in, It'll say it'll it'll have a name or something up here in the, the corner to say that you're logged in. I'm gonna click on this apps button. Looks like this grid. And it drops there's a little drop down menu. And on that drop down I'm gonna click on sites. Okay, here we go. And over here, I'm just gonna simply click on the create button. Okay, now I'm going to uh, use a blank template. There's a gallery with other pre-made sites. Uh, you know, you could venture there if you want to. The only thing is uh, some of the really nicer looking sites do require uh, editing within Photoshop. So if what I just said to you scares you, then just stay away from the gallery. Okay, but some people are good with design and you have no problem opening up a template in Photoshop and fixing it and uploading okay but that's that for a simple site we're just gonna go with the blank template and you're gonna call your site whatever you want to call it so I'll just say mr. wood testing I could create as many sites as I want practically unlimited there is a limited amount of storage but I don't think you guys are gonna have any problems with that just create as many sites as you want okay so I'm gonna do mr. wood testing I could always delete it later select a theme you can always change your theme you're not locked in which is really nice so I'll just pick you know a simple theme maybe I'll go with micro sport looks like it's got some Patriot colors right there you can edit ed practically everything in Google sites if you're not happy with it more options let's see what's that say site categories okay I'm not gonna worry about that right now so simple as that name your site pick the colors and then click on the create button and it's creating the site right now so here it is the address is right there at the top so I already have my link I can put on my syllabus send it to my students whatever okay um, now here's the most important part once you've created your site over on the corner there's a share button by default all sites created with PatriotHighSchool.com are only available to people within the organization in other words people would have to sign in with their Patriot High School account to look at your website well we all know if you do this with actual students this is not going to work you would have you know they forget their logins it's a it's a nightmare but it's there at, by default because we are an organization and so we might create our own websites just for us internal use business use okay so I don't want that though I want my students to be able to get to my website anytime anywhere so I'm gonna click the share button and I'm gonna change the privacy on it and I'm just gonna say public on the web there's other levels of security you're, you're free to look at I'm not gonna get into that right now so I'm just gonna say yep make just make it public anybody can go save it's that little step that can make a big difference okay uh, another nice thing I just want to point out is over here on the top right it says enable page level permissions so an administrator can basically make a site and then allow only certain people access to different pages for example I made the PatriotHighSchool.com site and I've given the career services access to the career services page but they can't access the other pages 
and that just prevents things from getting mixed up or broken and things of that nature okay so that's one of the nice features of Google Apps instead of just getting a private Gmail account so these are corporate business level features that are built into Google okay so I'm gonna go back to my site now it's public I know because it's got this little globe there in the corner um, and then you just go through the process of building the site so the most basic thing you'll be doing is creating a new page so I'm gonna create a new page and let's say we'll call this assignments okay now this there's a little drop down and I could pick what type of page it's gonna be a web page means I it's pretty open it's like a whiteboard I can put anything I want on there just of open space but there's other types one is announcements and they specifically design that page if you want to have some kind of posting some updates you're gonna be posting things on the Patriot High School website um, an example of that is our announcements page so let me let's take a look at that so when I post sort of the the latest and greatest this is an announcements page and it just keeps your latest one on top automatically so that's nice okay another type is a file cabinet so if you want to have just files for students whether they be templates or instructions or whatever it is it's just a page of just files and what's nice about that is if I upload a file as long as I upload uh, let's say I update that file oh I made some changes well I can re-upload it as long as it's the same file name that it's you're fine the link doesn't change you don't have to redo your whole website okay um, but I could talk about that another time that's a more a little advanced feature um, a list if you're just gonna have a list like links or list of things to do whatever okay now if you don't like the template once you start working with it you could always go back and change it okay so I'm gonna just call it assignments I'll put it at the top level you know you could choose you know the the structure of your website that's not really important at this time you know like you know do you want it slash assignments do you want it slash fall slash assignments that those are all customizations we really don't need to worry about that for a basic site so I'll just say create done I want an assignments page now if you notice over here on the left the the menu navigation has already been done for me so I don't need to mess with that so every time I create a page my navigation menu will automatically populate which is nice now you can go in and customize the menus and all that again those are more intermediate advanced features basic site just leave it alone let it populate okay so assignments now I want to put something on this page so all I gotta do is I'll go to insert and I got just hundred things I could put right there so I want to have a calendar yeah that looks good so I'm gonna put in a calendar now when I say calendar it's gonna look for my um, Patriot High School Google Calendar if you want to know more about that I'll be teaching the Google Apps class after this session uh, so here's my calendars I've already made let's put the English 12 I'm gonna pick that one I could have multiple calendars we'll just pick English 12 I'm gonna say select I can then customize how I want it to look okay we won't go into all that and I'll just say save okay there's my calendar doesn't look like one because we're in what's called edit mode so we're just adding stuff uh, we won't see what it looks like until I click the save button so I'm gonna click save it's gonna take all that coding and do it for me there we go there's a beautiful calendar right there on my website now to make changes to this calendar I don't touch the website it's there done my job's done with that to update it I'm gonna use my Google Calendar so let's go home 
And I'm going to click on this grid right here. And I'm going to click on calendar. And this is where I can go in and make my changes. Um, let's see. Well, I won't go into how to do it and all that, but you could basically just put in a date, put in your assignment. And when you update this Google Calendar, your website will automatically update. So that's. I have a calendar for each course. So like English 12 is, has its own calendar. English 10 would have its own calendar. And I even had my own Google site for each of those courses. Because English 10 has a completely different structure, different look and feel to it than English 12 does. So I like to create multiple sites. Uh, I don't want to have a site with just all my coursework. You, that just adds more navigation, more chance of kids getting lost. So, say, if you can create as many sites as you want for free, why not, right? That's why I do recommend creating a, that portal. Um, so, going back to that, that's a Google site right there. And I just created uh, links to my coursework. Okay, so the question is, you know, does every teacher have a PatriotHighSchool.com account? The answer is no. If you want one, uh, I, I sent an email. Uh, where you fill out a form and I can create that for you. Okay. Um, so right now, if I go to uh, log on or whatever that was, right. Sign right, the sign in. Sign in. I'm signing into other stuff. That's not the right My other accounts. Right, right. Yeah, you would be I signing into. Sign in in yeah, the Patriot High School one. Right. Now, you can use your own personal Gmail and create your own. You can do everything with your own Gmail. You don't have to use PatriotHighSchool.com. Um, the only thing is, you're on your own if you do that. No one can help you. If you forgot your password, you got to deal with Google. Nobody on site can help you with that. That's really the only thing. But then, if when you attend, um, I'll talk more about it in my next session. When you want to start implementing Web 2.0 tools into your classroom, you're going to want that Patriot High School account because that allows you as a teacher to create student accounts and have control over those accounts okay so that's that alright so I added a calendar um, just for the sake of time I'll tell you how to add one more thing probably the most important thing like I said this is just a very introductory course on creating a site many tutorials are, are out there but one important thing is adding um, oops uh, making changes or adding images right you want your site to have, be graphical right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this little pencil icon edit page this is where I can make any changes that I want one of those changes is I can change the layout so I can have two columns or three columns I recommend just one or two I think the more columns you add the more problems you might have on other people's screens or their mobile phones. Uh, one little note, um, the Google Sites is formatted for cell phones. So when they pull it up on their phone, it should come up pretty nicely. All right, so let's insert an image. Of course, you got to find one to upload. So right now, what I'm doing is searching my computer for the image basic law of you know web design you have to have all of your media ready to go you have to have your photos your video all that already sitting on your computer before you start adding things so you already have to have that product before it can be uploaded so have my photo there it is upload image I'm gonna say okay as you see it's like way too big can't even see it so I'm just gonna modify the size small medium large now here's the most important thing if that image is just for looks see this link right there by default when a user clicks on that image it's gonna expand into a new window like a photo but I might not want that picture to have that function I just want it to look cool on my website so I'm going to remove the link that way they can't it's not clickable it's just an image 
on the other hand I might want them to click on it and it takes them somewhere okay so in that case I'm going to click on change and see the link right there I can now put any link I want website document another page on my website whatever you want as long as you got a link you put it in there and then I'm gonna say resize it and then I have three choices I can make it link to something else or I could just remove it the link completely or I can leave it as it is if I leave it as is by default what's gonna happen is when I click on this image it's gonna open up into a new window Do you see how that happened right there you know so that's this just depends on what you're doing if you don't want them to click on it you just say remove the link if I want them to go somewhere then I'm gonna change the link that they gave me okay so that's just the basic rule so you guys know how to add a calendar you know how to add images just those two things you can do wonders with your website okay so um, see if I, if I have another moment I'm, I'm going to manage site and I'm going to general I'm on the general tab on the management menu and look down here see this button it says mobile automatically adjust site to mobile phones I have to actually check that box and click save then that way when your students pull up your course website on their phone Google will automatically adjust to their device it's an option by default it's turned off okay so you have to go into the management and say yeah I want it for mobile phones okay so that's all I have for today there's so much more to talk about, but I hope you guys have at least a little beginning, okay? Thank you very much.